DNA is in all the movies. DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, is inside every one of your trillions of cells. Apart from the red blood cells. And, of course, your hair and your nails, because they're dead. But the red blood cells are still alive, but they can't reproduce because they don't have DNA. DNA is the chemical name for the part of you that says how to build you. When your mother's egg, the largest cell in the body, in the human. When the mother's egg and the sperm, one of the smallest, when they got together, your father's genes joined with your mother's genes inside the nucleus. And this one cell grew, split, multiplied, doubled, four, eight, sixteen, until eventually there were trillions of cells to make a baby you. And then you kept growing by mitosis. Your cells splitting up, making your bones longer and longer, and your muscles bigger and stronger. Meiosis is the splitting up that makes the sperm and the egg. And so you inherited some of the genes from your father and some of the genes from your mother. And you're a mixture of the two. That's why you don't look exactly like your brother or sister. Because you've got a different mixture of genes inside you. Each one of your cells, apart from the red blood cells and the dead cells, each one of your cells has the messages of how to grow a whole new you. That's how DNA works in crime shows. Every time you breathe out, every time you walk, Skin cells are falling off. And yes, okay, they're dead, but they have inside them your DNA. And so it means that scientists can tell which rooms you were in and which rooms you weren't. And that makes it easier to find the murderer eh, for television shows. It just it takes quite a long time to get the DNA. It can take three weeks or a month. It's not like in television where they go, oh, just get the DNA, and two minutes later they've got it. Well, it's more complicated. You inherit traits, and traits are called characteristics, from your father, from your mother. You colour your skin, colour your eyes, colour your hair, if it's not dyed or gone grey. How tall you are. And, as my students know at school, what kind of earlobes you have. Very few characteristics are down to just one gene. And attached, or as mine are, not attached earlobes. Both sides. Mine are not attached. If you have the blobbly bit, that's not attached. If you don't have this, you've got attached earlobes. About a third of people have attached. And that's down to just one gene. Most other things like height, cleverness, your mood, how angry you are with your parents. All those things are a mixture of genes and also environmental considerations. If you have the gene for grow very tall because your father's very tall and your mother's very tall and then you go and eat not enough minerals, not enough calcium to grow tall bones, not enough proteins to grow long, tall limbs, then you're going to be short. This has happened in North Korea. The North Koreans and the South Koreans used to be all the same height. Now because of diet, an environmental factor, not because of genes. The genes are mostly the same, North Korea, South Korea. It's only been 70 years. They've been split up into two types of Korea. But unfortunately the North Koreans don't get enough food, enough good food enough vitamins and minerals and vegetables and meat to grow protein, to grow muscles. So it means the people of North Korea are more ill 
and chosen were the ones in South Korea. Not friendly politics. Be careful who you vote for. Don't vote for the guy that gives you loads of promises. Vote for the quiet, mostly female politicians. Ones you can trust. Ones who want to make the future better rather than just fill their pockets with money. The bullies. Don't vote for the bullies. You know what a bully is like. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. Genetics. This is the science of genetics. Any other words? Oh yeah, clones. The biggest clone industry in the world is not making sheep. Okay, there was Dolly the sheep. This was some time ago. They made a Dolly the sheep. It was quite an ill sheep. But they had about 2,000 attempts to take the nucleus out of one sheep's cell. <laughs> Get the egg cell from another sheep. Take the nucleus out. Throw that one away. Put the one cell into the the one nucleus into the other cell, and then re-implant this into the mother, and then grow a baby. A genetic clone of this sheep from the nucleus. Fab science. Now some people are trying to do it with humans, but it's illegal. There was a guy who did it in China. Mm. But this isn't where science is at, because you can just make babies the old-fashioned way, using intercourse. So therefore, where do you need clones? Well, bananas clone. My year nines know all about bananas being clones. I, I talk too much about bananas. But also, if you have an animal that has its testes taken away and now you want to make more of that animal, where would that be? That would be polo horses. In order to make them not too aggressive, they cut off the testes. And when they then find, hold on, this horse, now we've trained it, this gelding, is fantastic as a polo horse. We want more of this horse's genes. We can't breed from it. The testes are gone, no sperm. Make clones. And so, yeah, the cloning industry, the cloning money right now is in Argentina, where the rich people do a lot of polo. This is my lesson for today. It's getting a bit darker.